Hi friends, today we will be reading another one of my very well-written short stories that I wrote when I was like 11. And this one is a complete ripoff of Harry Potter. <laughs> it's called Mystical Magic and I haven't read this in like a long time. So let's get into it here. So under my table of contents, I put a little a little foreword from the author and goes, this book kind of takes the pl <laughs> this book kind of takes the place of the Harry Potter book series. I loved the Harry Potter books. JK Rowling is my favorite author. She's actually complete bull. I never, I only read the first Harry Potter book when I was like younger, and then I never read the series until I was in college. So, we're already in for a ride, eh? So, chapter one, Baker Household. The sun rose upon the hill at the Baker Household. Maria Baker, the mother, was cooking breakfast for her husband and three children. There were a few things that were different from this family, which most other families didn't have. They were witches and wizards. Kind of weird as opposed to you and me. As Glenn Baker walked down the stairs, he smelled the yummy food. Mmm, smells delicious, dear, he said with a smile. He kissed his wife and sat down at the table. Soon after, John Baker, their oldest son, came down the stairs in a house coat and his pajamas. Wow, Mom, your cooking skills are really coming together, he joked. Maria smiled and shrugged. It's all good, my dear boy, Maria said, chuckling. As she began to hand out the plates, Ella, their second oldest daughter, flew down the stairs and did a twirl and a jump. Good morning, Mommy, she said, hugging her. Just at that exact same moment, Jasmine Baker twirled down the stairs. Good morning, everyone, she said. Jasmine was the youngest, but not really. Ella and Jasmine were twins. Ella was older by three minutes, but they didn't care. They all sat down to eat when the phone rang. Hello, Baker residence, Jasmine said politely. Hi, Jasmine, this is Professor Sherry Dither, the headmistress at Grimwad School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I'm calling to enroll you and your sister Ella in our school. You girls are 11 today, right? She asked. That's right, Jasmine said. Good, then may I please speak to your mother or father, Professor Dither asked. Sure you can, Jasmine replied. She held her hand over the phone and said, It's a lady calling from a witchcraft and wizardry school. She wanted to enroll me and Ella, Jasmine told her. After her mother was done talking, they all enjoyed their breakfast. Then they decided to go to Swilled Road to get their witching school supplies. As they did, they met up with their uncle Mark, their grandma, their auntie Elle, and their cousin Kimberly. As they made their way through Swilled Road, they bought everything they needed for the school year. They ran to the Los Angeles airport to the flight to Ohio. They ran in there and took the plane on the left, which is the plane leaving to the school. I just really had to give you guys all the information. Be really specific about it. Chapter 2, Birthday Bash. Surprise, everyone on the plane cheered. Happy birthday, Ella and Jasmine. Ella and Jasmine were so surprised that they didn't even notice who was on the plane. As soon as they left for Grimwatt School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, they had a little celebration on the plane. They had cake, opened presents, and got so many cards. They got so many things for their birthday that, they, that they'd use for school, they didn't even want to get off the plane. <sighs> Thank you all for the fabulous gifts and cake and treats, Ella began. On behalf of Jasmine and mine's birthday, we'd like to thank you all for coming, even though you're going to the school too. Even though we don't know most of you, we thank you a lot for appreciating our birthday. <laughs> Ella finished and took a bow. Everyone cheered. They soon had music going and the party started. It wasn't a bad party, but it was fun. They had a refreshment table and everything. It was sort of like the prom, but even better, it was on a plane. Time passed and Ella and Jasmine were having the time of their lives. Everything was fun to them. They played with their new presents to try them out and they all worked perfectly and, f <laughs> and fit their perseverance excellently. This birthday is the best I've ever had, Jasmine exclaimed over the music. I know, it's the best, Ella said. Soon everyone stopped partying and sat back down in their seats. It was a very big plane. So there could have been at least 100 people on that plane, Ella thought. 
man, are we ever going to get to the end of this flight or is it going to go on forever, Jasmine thought to herself. Jasmine and Ella wondered which house they were going to be put into. There was Starian, Dolitors, Wolbullish, and Mermindal. Ella and Jasmine did agree on the same house, Mermindal, but their mother said that they were probably going to be put in Dolitors. They didn't care which one, they loved them both. Time soon passed and Ella and Jasmine, Maria, Glenn, and John all fell asleep on the plane. Soon after, Jasmine woke up to find them finally flying over land, not water anymore. <laughs> she smiled. Soon everyone was awake. Their mother said that they'd be at the school by sundown, which meant a long time. There was still birthday cake to be eaten, so they all had another piece. It was still so boring on the plane that they had no choice than to watch a movie. They watched Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. It was an awesome movie. After it was done, they watched another movie to make the time pass, so they watched New York Minute. It was pretty cool too. The time was now only 7.30. It was still daylight outside. It was a very long plane ride. Chapter 3 onward. Later, they found themselves off the plane and headed for a line of 17 boats all lined up. What is this for, Mom? Ella asked. It's to get across the lake onto the next land to get to Grimwatts, Maria told them. As they all got into boat seven, they rode for at least two hours. Jasmine fell asleep, Ella, Maria, and Glenn, and everyone were still up. As they all rode across the river, the moonlight shone, shined down on them as they all stared up into the stars. Are we almost at Grimwatts? Ella asked her dad. Almost. We'll be there by morning, he said. As Ella closed her eyes to join her sister, she had a dream about what they would do in the school. Ella woke up but didn't open her eyes and heard her parents talking. Oh, Glenn, I hope they don't hear those stories. Everyone will probably tell them, Maria said. Don't worry, dear. I'm sure they won't hear them on the... On the other hand, they could hear them, <laughs> Glenn said. After Ella fell asleep, she was still thinking about what her parents had said. What were they talking about? What stories? I guess I'll have to wait until we get to Grimwatts. Plus, we still don't know which house we're going to be put in, Ella thought. Chapter 4. New People Jasmine awoke to see land and the sun coming up. Soon after, Ella woke up. Wow, we're here, we're finally here, Ella exclaimed. Her happiness woke up Maria and Glenn. Ella and Jasmine stared at the big castle on the top of the hill. Jasmine was amazed about the school. Then, she said, it's going to be hard to climb that hill. <laughs> Don't worry, dear, Glenn said. There's at least six people there to help us all get up that hill to the school. Plus, there's a few ways to get there on the land. There's escalators, stairs, and hiking stuff, he said. As every boat lined up and everyone got out, they each got to the place they wanted to go on. The Baker family took the escalators. They didn't mind anything else, but they didn't feel like walking up the hill. The person there was Angel and Jamie, the two girls. They were both in the same house. They were in Mermindal. The girls wanted to be put in that house. Angel and Jamie were very nice girls. As everyone walked onto the escalator, it took at least 20 minutes to get to the top. When they finally reached the top, Angel said, This is Grimwatt's School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, she said. It's been here for millions of years, Jamie said. They walked around the school and had a tour around like where the classes were, outside. There were two outside, Greenhouse and WWG, which wizard gym. As Angel and Jamie guided everyone to the school, they slowly opened the doors. It was so beautiful inside. They walked up the main staircase. At the top, they were at the back of a big group of kids waiting to get in the door. Maria and Glenn and all the other parents were gone. This is so exciting, Ella said. I know, Jasmine said. As Jasmine finished speaking, a girl came up to her. Well, who are you, she asked. <laughs> I'm Jasmine. This is my sister Ella, Jasmine told her. Oh, the Baker family, right? I've heard about you. Your dad's a sorcerer, right? And your mother is at home all the time, right? She said, smirking. Yeah, that's right, but who are you? Jasmine asked. My name's Andrea Phillips. I'm from Gronwolf, you know, the wizarding town. Not in one of those mortal towns like you and mostly everyone else lives in, Andrea said. Ella and Jasmine tried to ignore her, so they moved up to the front. Just then, a woman in her 60s <laughs> opened the door and said, Welcome to Grim Watch, she said. I am Professor Sherry Dyther. When you walk through this door, and when I call your name, step up and you will be addressed to your house. She turned around and said, Walk this way. That's certainly reminiscent of a certain Harry Potter scene, isn't it? Chapter 5, Grimwatch School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. 
As they all walked through the door, Ella spotted a colorful wand. They followed the professor until she walked up and picked up a list from the table. When I call your name, you will stand under the spot and I will wave the wand over your head. Then in the air, it will spell the house that you will be most good in. <laughs> she called Andrea's name. The wand spelt out will bullish. This boy, he told the girls that the house Andrea was going to be put in was the bad house. The girls hoped they wouldn't be in that house. Soon after, mostly everyone went. There were at least 50 people left. Then Ella's name was called. Ella walked up and stood on the spot. The wand made a colorful mist as if it was thinking. Then it spelt out Mermindal. Ella was so happy. After, her sister's name was called. The wand in two seconds slowly spelt out D-O-L. Ella held her breath. And then the wand spelt out Mermindal. Jasmine was so happy. She ran over to where her sister was sitting. Everyone welcomed her. After the feast, the headmaster called out, I am the headmaster, Professor Nolan Callowsworth. This year will be an amazing year because we have so many delighting first years, he said. Classes will start tomorrow. Don't be late. Chapter 6, The First Day The next morning, Ella and Jasmine hurried to get to class. Their first class was spellcaster class with Professor Minty Hardwall. <laughs> As the two made their way up the stairs, they looked around the classroom. It was gorgeous. The classroom was painted gold, and there were two lines of tables and chairs. On line on one side of the room, and another on the other side. There was a cauldron at the back of the room. It wasn't a very big classroom either. It was small. As Ella walked up one side of the room on the benches and chairs, she sat down beside a girl. Jasmine sat on the other side, and she was already talking to a girl. Ella thought she heard her name was Crystal. Ella decided to start talking before the professor got here. Hi, I'm Ella, she said. Hi, I'm Erin, she said. Erin had blonde hair like Ella and blue eyes like Ella. <laughs> she smiled at Erin. Have you been here before, Ella asked. Are you kidding me? I've been here a million times because of all my sisters and brothers who go to school here, Erin told her. Really? What are their names, Ella asked. Uh, Gretchen, Jesse, Haley, Chad, Hillary, Angel, and Jamie, Erin told her. Oh, and Angel and Jamie are head leaders in the school. Really, that's pretty cool, Ella said. Yeah, and the best part about that is, Aaron got cut off by the professor coming in through the door. Good morning, professor, Ella and Aaron chanted with the other students. Today this class was all Mermindal, which was a good thing. Today we will, we will be learning the delights of Coriolis born Talis, Professor Hardwall said. What you have to do is pick up your wand, wave it around three times, and then say Coriolis born Talis, Professor Hardwall told them. Miss Baker, why don't you go first, the professor said. Um, Professor, which one, Jasmine asked. I'm Jasmine, and that's my sister Ella, she said. Ah, so we have twins in the classroom, eh, Professor Hardwell said. Um, how about Jasmine, she said. Jasmine picked up her wand and waved it around three times, and then said the magic word. That spell made her fly up without a broom. Great job, Miss Baker. No one usually learns that spell until they've tried it at least five times, and you did great, the professor exclaimed. Jasmine beamed. Now, Ella. Ella picked up the wand, waved it around three times, and said the magic word. She also flew up. The professor was quite pleased with their efforts that class. After spellcaster class was done, they headed off to their next class, witch and wizard history class. Jasmine was great at history class, Ella not so much. As they sat down beside each other in class, the next professor walked through the door. Good morning, students, he said in a cheery voice. Today we will, we will be learning about the first witch in our history, Madame Samantha Higgins. Can anyone tell me about her, he asked. Jasmine's hand shot up in the air. Yes, you. Madame Samantha Higgins was born February 29th in 1273. She grew up in the mortal world, her and her family trying to escape getting killed. Samantha and her family, mother, father, and sister, <laughs> lived in a cave where no one could find them. Soon they had left the cave. Samantha Higgins battled the fierce and deadly sorcerer Finnegus Parole and defeated him and got her trust as the most famous witch in her time and still is today, Jasmine finished. Everyone clapped and the professor was amazed. Excellent work, Miss Baker, Professor Harry Dandel said. I'm very impressed with your work, he told her. Jasmine smiled. Everyone was given a topic on a witch or wizard. Not Jasmine, because she'd already given one. Had to tell at least one minute about he or she. Now, Miss Ella Baker, your topic on Witcher Wizard is famous wizard Howard Green. Please tell me something about him. 
Ella was nervous, but she knew who he was. Howard Green was born on November 13th in 1895. He was a great wizard in, uh, oh yeah, the Spellcaster Knowledge Challenge, which was a big event in his time. He won every championship and everyone wanted to be like him. He had reported to anything the witches or wizards needed him to. He was definitely an awesome wizard, Ella finished and sat down. The professor gave Ella a B plus and Jasmine an A plus. They were both proud and didn't want to compete with each other. They were happy with their results. You've been doing great today, Jazz, Ella said to her sister happily. So have you. You did really great on the spellcaster spell. It was a great landing, Jasmine said. <laughs> Chapter 7, Under and Over. Later that night, when the girls were back in the dormitories, they sat around the fireplace listening to all the stories their house members were saying. Hey, I know a scary one, a boy named Griffin said. Plus it's true, he said. Really, let's hear it then, a girl said. All right, you know Samantha Higgins, the one Jasmine was talking about in class today. Well, that sorcerer, he's alive still. He's in the creepy creek, where it's forbidden to go there. And he lives by drinking blood from the ancient animal, the Gorn Napper. Legend has it that when he sees people out in that creek, he thinks it's Samantha Higgins and kills and drinks the blood from anyone he sets his eyes on, Griffin said. So, never go out in the creepy creek, ever. Griffin and the other students soon went to bed and all had a good night's sleep. That morning, Jasmine was the first to wake up out of Ella and the other teammates. Jasmine got out of bed, got dressed, and walked down to the meeting ceremonies room. The Wolbullish and the Dolatoris were already there. Soon after, all the Mimindal were there, the Sarian team came through the door. After everyone had eaten breakfast, it was time for the next class. Ella and Jasmine's class was WWG. Ella and Jasmine walked along the courtyard into the WWG field. Okay, said the WWG teacher. My name is Mr. Phillips. We are going to be doing broom flying lessons today. So everyone go grab a broomstick and let's get started. Everyone stood beside their broomstick and looked at Mr. Phillips. Okay, everyone pick up your broom, sit on it, not too hard, and then say up, he said. Ella and Jasmine did the thing. <laughs> Ella was soon flying in the air and was already having fun. Jasmine, on the other hand, was having a little trouble, but then she got up and was having so much fun. That class soon ended, and it was time to go in for their next class in history again. But just then, there was a call from the loudspeaker. Attention, students. The fifth floor is, is forbidden, for many reasons, <laughs> and the creepy creek is off limit. If this happens and you get lost, please contact us from your elevator. <laughs> What was that about, Jas Jasmine asked. Ella shrugged as they walked into history class. Okay class, today we'll, we will be learning about the woman named Sarah Greenfield, the very popular witch of your time today. Can anyone tell me about her, the professor asked. Jasmine's hand shot up in the air. Yes, Miss Baker. Sarah Greenfield was born July 18th in 1992. She is one of the best music artists of our time. She has sang many songs like Spell in the Moon, Tower Power, and many more. She is very talented. Her dreams took her many places, from freeing witches and wizards to cutting ropes. <laughs> she is a very big celebrity. Great job, Miss Baker, Professor said. Later that afternoon, Ella and her sister walked down to spellcaster class. Today, they would be learning about magic pendants. A magic pendant will do more than look nicely on you, but it has special powers. This one I have here is one for healing. There are 10 magic pendants all around the wizarding world. They are each different colors of rocks inside of them. There is pink, blue, yellow, red, green, orange, black, silver, white, and brown. Mine in particular is orange for healing the hurt and sick. Does anyone else here have a magic pendant? Professor Hardwall asked. Ella knew that she didn't have a magic pendant, but her mother did. Her hand shot up in the air. Yes, Ella? I don't have a magic pendant, but my mother does, Ella said. Really, and what color is it? The professor asked. Um, pink, Ella told him. That's great, <laughs> Professor Hardwell commented. The class passed and the girls went off to have supper in the dining hall. The food was great. Ella caught up to Erin and found out that she was on her team. Erin, hi, Ella said to her. Oh, hey, Ella, Erin said. At that moment, Andrea walked down the hall and said to Ella, Listen, Ella, I am the queen of this school and you are not going to take me out of the game. <laughs> Andrea said as she was turning around. What game? Ella called after her, but Andrea couldn't hear her. What game? Ella asked Erin. She means that you're not going to take her place out of the spotlight and not let her and her team win the golden wand at the end of the year as the house prize, Erin told her. Ella smirked and said to herself, Oh, don't worry, Andrea. I won't ruin it for you. I'll just take it away from you. 
<laughs> Later that evening, Ella showed Aaron showed Ella and Jasmine the electronic chart that tells how every team is doing, how many circles each team has. Aaron printed one out. It looked like this. I don't know if you can see it. But essentially it has Mermindal in first, Will Bullish in second, Dolla Taurus in third, and Starian in fourth. Well, our team is in the lead, Aaron said. That's great, Ella said. Totally, we're in first, Jasmine said. Yeah, but the problem is, Will Bullish isn't far behind, Aaron said. Later that night, an hour before lights out, the Mermindal team had gotten a treat for being first in the week. They all ate their chocolate-covered jelly beans, which everyone loved. As Jasmine went to sleep that night, she thought about the story. Is it really all true? Is there really a bad sorcerer out there in the woods? Well, I hope I can find out. Why would you want to find that out? Chapter eight, look. The next morning, Ella and Jasmine were split in classes. So we'll start off with Jasmine's class first. Her class this morning is greenhouse. Jasmine flew to the greenhouse class. There were six kids from Mermindal: Jasmine, Kayla, John, Edward, Emma, and Rupert. <laughs> There were six kids from Dollatorce, Angie, Bree, Mary, Caitlin, Ashley, and Bradley. That was it. They were the only kids. Professor Leaf was teaching the class. Today we will be gardening for sprinkle seeds. Now, if you don't know what they are, they are shiny silver seeds. That can be made into soup for the sick, but they are hard to find. Take a close look in the ground. There may be a few snakes, spiders, and worms in there, so be careful. Jasmine had chose by the flowers, where she knew sprinkle seeds were. Jasmine was very smart. She dug in the soil at least a foot down, until she saw a glow of light. She dug to where she saw it. There they were, a big gold mine of sprinkle seeds. She dug them up and put them in her pail. She showed them to Professor Leaf. Well, look at this. This is the most biggest... <laughs> This is the most biggest pile of sprinkle seeds I've ever seen. Children, look at Jasmine Baker's pail. She has at least 167 sprinkle seeds, Professor Leaf told everyone. Jasmine just smiled at them. Fucking Jasmine, this overachiever. Ella had just walked into potions class with Professor Gundy. They would be learning how to make wish potions. Class, to make a wish potion, you have to have something you want to have to wish for. So that's why I've asked everyone to bring something that they want to wish for. How about we'll go around the room and see what everyone wants to wish for, okay? How many are there in here? One, two, three, uh, ten of you. Okay, let's start with you, Andrea. Well, I wanted to wish for a brand new car so I don't have to buy it, like this one. Andrea showed up the convertible that she wanted. Soon it was Ella's turn. What about you, Ella? Professor Gundy asked. Well, I wanted to wish for a Zoom broom, so that's why I brought a picture of it from a magazine, Ella said. Okay, so now drop your wish into the cauldron filled with water, pour in Forgo, Chancel, Hapido, Riego, and Megola. Then mix it all together and wish for your wish, and it should end up over there. <laughs> Professor Gundy pointed to the end of the room. All ingredients round and round, nothing turning upside down. Make my wish come true and make it real as you do, Ella chanted with the others. After three seconds, everyone's wish came true and landed at the back of the room. <laughs> Ella found her Zoom broom, and it was great. She and Aaron had wished for the same thing. They were all riding in the air. <laughs> Chapter 9, Creepy Creek. Later that night, Aaron, Jasmine, and Ella walked outside. They sneaked past the keeper's shack and walked down to the entrance to the creepy creek. They each walked over the fence and stared into the black creek. This is it. If anyone's going to turn back, they'd better do it now, Aaron said as she took a deep breath and started walking. Ella and Jasmine followed her. They walked along the path. They heard wolves, chipmunks, squirrels, raccoons, and other things you'd hear in a creek. After an hour, the girls walked deeper and deeper into the forest. They stopped to rest. They heard something coming toward them. Thump, 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 thump. The thumping grew louder until they saw a figure emerging from the bushes. He had a gray hooded robe on and a big wand in his hand. <laughs> ah, the girls yelled. They took off to run, but Jasmine was too late. He grabbed her, but Ella and Aaron grabbed her back in the nick of time. He held up his wand and started to chant something. Aaron tried to do a spell. Ronde, Mellowin, Conegus, Blow, Inse, Dose, Halamano, Aaron chanted. The sorcerer flew back and the girls took off out of the woods. The sorcerer was right behind them. They flew up over the fence and back to the window in their house. They told the other members to look out the window. They all saw the hooded sorcerer running back into the dark and forbidden creek. Chapter 10, The Room. Professor, Professor, head mistress, Ella called as she rushed through the dining hall. Everyone thought she was insane. 
A sorcerer. He's back. We saw him last night from the window. He had a hooded robe on and... And Ella's voice trailed up. Everyone had either gasped or stood up. Most of the professors and headmistress had stood up. Everyone will go to... Everyone will to be returning to dormitories now, the headmistress said. Everyone had gotten up from their seats. Some took food with them. The professors and the headmistress went outside to see the creepy creek. Ella and the others had watched outside the window. The headmistress flew over the fence and returned out 20 minutes later. She had a frightened look on her face. Later, the children were allowed out of their rooms. Aaron, Ella, and Jasmine decided to wait until everyone was back in the dining hall. They went up to the fifth floor and opened the door. It was dark and dusty inside. They walked inside and closed the door. They had a look around. They saw a mirror, statues, and cobwebs and stuff like that. They saw another door. They opened the door. There was something big in there. Oh my god, Aaron said as she stared at the creature. Whoa, look at that thing, Ella said. It's humongous, Jasmine said. This door was locked. For a good reason, Jasmine said. Ah, they yelled. The creature was a big red dragon. It glared at them. They turned around quickly and ran out of the room. They closed the door and locked it and ran out of it quickly. What was that, Aaron asked, really out of breath. A dragon, I think. That's what it looked like, Jasmine said. It was, a voice behind them said. They turned around to see the headmistress looking straight at them. What were you three doing in there, Professor Dyther said. Um, uh, okay. We went to see what was in there. You can ex Bella's now, Aaron said. No, I just don't want anyone going in that room. Are we clear, Professor Dyler asked. Yes, ma'am, they said. Chapter 11. Paralyzed. Well, I'm not paralyzed, but I seem to be struck by you. No one had dared to ever go in that room or out in the creepy creek. A week later, Ella, Aaron, and Jasmine heard someone scream. They ran to where they heard it. It leaded them to the main staircase. They saw Angel. She was solid, but still breathing. She was paralyzed and couldn't talk. Guess we're into Chamber of Secrets now. Someone, help, Jasmine screamed. Everyone is there soon after. Angel had been taken to the medical room <laughs> to get unparalyzed. Everyone is scared about the attack. Who is the attacker? And why did he paralyze Angel? Who would do something like that? As the week went on, everyone moved in tight groups, hoping that they wouldn't get paralyzed either. Soon people were accusing people of being the attacker. Some thought that it was the bad sorcerer. Other thought it was, others thought it was someone they'd never expect to be doing something like this. The next week, something else did happen. There was another attack. Ella and Jasmine went to the medical room to see who had now been attacked. Ella gasped as she looked down at the second victim. Oh no, Ella said. It's, it's, it's Aaron, <laughs> Jasmine said. Now, since there were two attacks, no one was safe. <laughs> Chapter 12, not safe anymore. Ella had trouble with this attack. She was feeling sad about losing Angel and Aaron. So far, it was kind of weird. Angel and Aaron were sisters. Ella had a hunch that the next victim, or if there was a next victim, would be another one of Aaron's brothers or sisters. Later that day, Ella and Jasmine raced down the hall to potions class. They would be learning about how to make a money potion. This sort of potion requires a few things. First, take some olive oil and pour it in. Next, some clover, then a magnet, a penny, and then make a puppet of you or whoever you're going to be making the potion to. Then, drop some of your potion onto the puppet, then just wait and see. That actually kind of sounds like something that would be in like a witchcraft prosperity book. Anyone who did that had gotten money after the class. Some found quarters, dollars, toonies, and dollar bills. Everyone loved that. Later that night, everyone was walking in groups. Ella, Jasmine, Jamie, John, and Edward all moved in a group. After they decided that they would be in this group until the attack stopped, everyone had to stay together. Later that evening, Jasmine decided to go down to the library to see if she could find anything about the sorcerer. She walked down into the library by herself. Some kids were surprised she didn't get paralyzed. She walked down in the shelf labeled Former Witches and Wizards and found a book on sorcerers. She read aloud, Vinicus Parole, one of the greatest sorcerers in the world, was trapped and brought into evil once he had lost to Madame Samantha Higgins. He started to learn black magic where he fought Madame Higgins in the Creepy Creek, now called because whoever he lays eyes on dies because he always thinks it's Samantha Higgins returning to fight him because he wanted a rematch. <laughs> Jasmine turned the page. He only flees from the sound of a cat, which is fatal to him. <laughs> he, had hated, he had hated cats. That's the, only, that's the only way to get rid of them. If he hears more, if he hears more than one cat, 
he will fade away. Jasmine checked the book out and showed her sister back in the dormitory. We need cats, Ella said to her sister. Well, Marlo is my cat, Jamie Eves dropped. I can help you. Okay, who else has a cat? Jasmine asked. Well, I Edward and Kayla have one. Is that enough? Jamie asked. Yep, Ella said. We'll start tomorrow night, Ella declared. Chapter 13, The Solution. That night, Jasmine, Ella, Jamie, Edward, and Kayla walked out into the creepy creek. They sat down where Ella, Aaron, and Jasmine were sitting before. Then they heard something. Thump, 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 thump. They looked back at the bushes, and there he was, standing there with his wand in the gray hooded robe he had worn before, but now he seemed a lot stronger. Meow, a cat cried. Meow, another cat cried. Meow, Jamie's cat cried. Meow, all three cats cried at the same time. Soon, soon light started to pour through him. Just then, the headmistress flew in. She gasped. Meow, the three cats cried together again. Soon he had faded away, he was gone. All that was left of him was a pile of dust. What are you children doing out here, Professor Dyther asked sternly. Well, Professor Dyther, the reason we're out here was to defeat the sorcerer. I read in a book that when he hears the cries of cats together, he would fade away. So they all agreed to help. To save the school from more attacks, Jasmine told the professor. The headmistress walked up to the dust and dug a hole and buried the dust of the sorcerer. You children have braved the Forbidden Creek very wisely. I am impressed with your acts of kindness for your braveness. You will each be receiving 40 circles each. <laughs> now come on, let's go see if the other children are well yet. Professor Dyther guided them back to the school and they walked right back into the medical room. Aaron and Angel were back and moving. Aaron, Ella ran up to Aaron and gave her a big hug. Angel, Jasmine ran to see her. They were happy to see each other, but the only problem was that they couldn't remember what had happened to them. Ella and Jasmine explained that they'd been paralyzed and couldn't move or breathe until they used the sprinkle seeds to bring them back. Well, I'm glad that's all over, Angel said. No kidding, I just felt like I was sleeping, and then I end up in the medical room, Aaron chuckled. <laughs> Chapter 14, All is Well. Today was the last day of classes for the students. Everyone was wondering who would win the golden wand. Today is a momentous occasion for all of us. Today we will be deciding who will win the golden wand. First, I'd just like to say thank you to Ella, Jasmine, Jamie, Kayla, and Edward for defeating the sorcerer. Now, in fourth place, Starian, Professor Dyther announced. Now, in third place, Dolators. And in second place, she began, Wobblish. What? We were supposed to take the golden wand, Andrea complained. So that means in first place, Mermindel, she said happily. Ella and Jasmine hugged as they jumped for joy. Angel went up and took the golden wand. Yay, Ella said. Yes, we did it, Jasmine said excitedly. As Ella and Jasmine said their goodbyes to everyone, they couldn't forget their journeys that they'd had this semester. They'll always remember it. As Ella and Jasmine hopped on into the plane to join their mother and father, they couldn't help but glance back at the school. They'll always remember it. Plus, there's next year to look forward to. The end. I was such a weird kid. <laughs> like, this is how I spent my time. So writing all these fucking stories back when I was like 10. But I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Let me know your thoughts about it. Please do not roast me too hard. And if you're new to my channel, please be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you've not already. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.